Hello everybody, welcome to, back to Jacob's Corner and before we get going I would like to say thank you. Thank you to everyone who's watched and commented and just subscribed, did all those amazing things on the first video. I've loved every piece of comment and I've tried to reply to every single one. I hope I did, but I, I would just like to say thank you. Thank you so much for the amazing, wonderful support. It means so much to me and uh it's just been amazing and i hope you guys are gonna enjoy many many more videos it's it's so much fun and to get keep going with our projects i've decided that for the next video we should do one of my mom's latest creations which i really really did enjoy and it looked absolutely amazing is the interactive board that she added to one of her latest journals that she did, the Mad Rabbit, I think it was called, or the Rabbit with the very green papers. It looked absolutely amazing and it was an amazing addition to a journal. So I thought that would be a lot of fun for us guys to do for this video. So this is the board I did just as a sort of practice to get into it, to see what I would like to add, what I would not like to add, maybe add some changes here and there. but. I just did this one to show you guys what we're going to do and then I'm going to take you guys through the process and I'm going to make it together. So this is the one I did earlier. You guys can see it's very very similar to what my mom's looked like. I did add this piece right here because it got a little ruined up there. It didn't come out as, as neatly as this one. So I thought it'd be fun to just add it in the background. But this board is so much fun and you can do so much with it. I also added this right here, which is like a little addition. And then this little piece right here and another little piece right here. I just had so much fun sort of working and, you know, adding all of these pieces. Also with the background, I also added like a hidden clock up here because I thought it would be fun. I like to sort of add stories to the things I do. So I obviously thought to myself, what if this was like a clock device for something? Some sort of strange clock device that nobody knows what it is. What if it's uh, the, is it the Mad Rabbit that's in the Alice in, in the Wonderland? That ha he has the timepiece. What if this is maybe in his journal and this is just like what he fiddles with, what he plays with. It, it just, it's fun to add something you know, as you're crafting, sort of give yourself a bit of story. At least I find it fun because then it just makes the crafting a little bit more fun for me. You know, it gives it, you know, that sort of like, why am I doing that? And, you know, what what else would I like to see maybe in there? But this is what we're going to be working on today. So let's start. I'm going to keep this up here just so you guys can keep an eye, an eye on it. So we basically see where we go. First piece, I would like, I would say, is the probably one of the most important pieces to start with, is the actual, obviously, actual card that's in the back. Now, I'm using, for this one and the one we're about to make, I'm using an old Amazon packaging. As you guys can see, I think a book came in this. And it's perfect because it's a you know it's a good strong card and uh if you do what i'm about to do it's even stronger basically what i'm going to do as you guys can see there's a nice outline of this entire piece which is perfectly obviously it's a perfectly straight you know sort of portrait i think just a little bit bigger than a4 but it's perfect because if you just follow the line around you can cut it out perfectly and that obviously we've got both sides out. And then if you glue them together, it's much more strong piece of card. So I've decided to use that as for the, obviously the background piece, obviously the card that holds everything together. So let me cut this out. Once I cut it out, I'll show you guys obviously gluing it together. And then also what we're going to do to strengthen everything up and make sure it holds really well. We're going to also wrap it in like a, thick piece maybe like a thick piece of paper like a thicker piece of paper or some, some some kind and that's going to be obviously our main card so let me get cut this out and i'll get back to you guys 
Okay guys, so I've cut the sides off. As you guys can see, this is what we're left with. So I basically go using using scissors. I don't use a guillotine for that. I just, I feel it, you know, it's much more easier for me to just sort of go by my own hand and see where I'm going. So we cut the sides off. Now we have that off. We can concentrate on this. So because obviously I have these on one side and that on the other, I like to sort of, I like, the more of the clean look then just because it lets me concentrate a bit better obviously you guys can glue them together like this if you want it doesn't really matter i would just say just glue them two pieces together once they're glued together we're gonna wrap it in a i would say try to aim for a thicker like the sort of crafting paper or like a wrapping paper just something a bit thicker than just a normal paper just because Obviously, we want to add a bit more strength to the card. But, but, before you go doing that, what I would say is measure the card, obviously the, its length, find, find your middle point and cut the card in half. Just because if you were to bend the card in the middle like this without cutting it in half and leaving yourself a bit of a gap, this middle piece would be extremely thick and you would be having problems trying to bend it and open it and it could just create loads of problems for you. So my advice, once you have this glued together, find your middle, middle, middle of the board and just cut it in half and then when you're gluing it down to the paper, leave yourself just, you know, just a little gap. Just, it doesn't have to be too big. As you guys can see, I left maybe like couple of millimeters maybe four or five millimeters of a gap just so it's you know nice and easy to close there's no there's no problem actually closing the card so let me go glue this down and then once we glue this down i'm gonna guys show you obviously cutting and make giving yourself that gap onto the piece of paper okay guys so i've glued my cards together i just use the regular sort of stick glue you can also use pva glue doesn't matter just any kind of glue just something that holds really well together obviously i'm gonna let that dry and then as i said i'm gonna get my i'm gonna get my ruler and find where the middle point is so i can see this is 30 30 centimeters right there so this is 31 centimeters, so I'm going to aim for 15.5. Yeah, and then once this dries a little bit more, just so I can, you know, so I don't ruin it, I'm going to obviously cut it right down the middle. And then I'm going to show you guys, obviously with the gluing down on the piece of paper, you know, just sort of what kind of gap I would say you guys should aim for. If you guys want to go ahead and obviously do it already i would say as i said leave yourself a couple of millimeters three four millimeters is perfectly fine it's plenty it's just so you guys can give yourself you know that gap so when you do bend it as you guys can see there's no problem bending the actual thing it's nice and easy and doesn't get you know heavy so let me let this let it dry i'll cut it in half and then we'll get to gluing it onto the piece of paper. Okay guys, so I've got my board in, in the middle. You guys can see, I have two pieces. And this is something, what it should look like for you guys. So if you guys leave yourself, I would say that right there is about perfect. Just that little piece in the middle is per perfectly fine. Now let us go over everything we've done so far, just so, you know, I'm not, jumping too much ahead of you guys or you guys are not lost anywhere we obviously found ourselves a piece of cardboard that we want to use for the actual board because it was a, a like a large envelope we've glued the two pieces together if you guys already have like a very strong piece of card that you guys can use perfect awesome you guys don't need to do any gluing obviously we cut out the size that we want any size you guys want to do, absolutely up to you. You guys can do like a little one. You guys can do a, obviously, ginormous one with many, many wheels and turnings. You guys can do a very slim one where it looks almost like a clock tower. That can be done as well. You guys can do, you know, 
different stuff. You guys can do an actual clock. So if you were to take this card, and if you're very, very good with cutting out a circle, pre-made yourself a big circle. If you could do like a very big circle, you could do that. And then obviously the two pieces, you put them obviously right next to each other, leave yourself a bit of a gap. And that way you'll be able to close it and open it. As you guys can see, like I wouldn't say hundred, sorry. <laughs> but I would say there's many, many ways of doing a different sort of styles and different techniques completely up to you. So let your, you know, let your imagine imagination wild. But we're sticking to this. So f for now, I just wanted to obviously show you guys how many different ideas you can put into it and styles. But th this is the next step. So gluing these two right here, leaving yourself that gap in the middle if you're doing it like this. And then obviously the sides, fold them over, glue them, you know, and then once you do that, let it obviously dry a little bit. And then we're going to get to doing the actual middle, the piece of paper that you guys are going to be gluing on the inside. That's going to give you the sort of design look. Okay, guys, so I've glued my two pieces of cardboard on the piece of paper I've prepared. That's obviously going to just hold everything together. It's going to give us a bit more of that strength. I just wanted to show before I keep going. When you guys are doing this piece, right, this part right here, where you're going to put a bit of glue up here, a bit of glue down here, and then obviously you're going to fold these over like this. When you get to this stage, if you're not sure how to... Or if you then sort of wonder, oh, you know, why is his side, why his sides, you know, so very neat and folded in? What I do, you guys probably already know this, because <laughs> I'm I'm guessing most of you have been doing crafting way longer than me, and I, I'm ninety eight percent sure that way better at it than me as well. I cut these pieces that then sort of stick ov over, sort of cut them off, and then obviously I s snip them away so they are basically gone, and then I can take this side and fold it across without having any sort of bulky corners. I just wanted to show that just in case you guys ever run into that sort of problem or will be wondering why my other pieces then fold very neatly over as well. So let me just glue these sides now down and then we'll keep going okay so i'm about to do the other side as well i'm just going to show you exactly what i meant with the whole folding the sides and putting the sides off I've put plenty of glue on that side i'm just gonna make sure it's nice and tight all the way and then i like to go from the middle just because i can then just sort of smooth it out on both sides there we go. Give it a nice sort of clean. Press the sides down, go into the middle as well. I forgot to do it last time and then it sort of left a gap in there. So I'm, I like to make sure now that I sort of press down in, with my thumbnail right into the middle. Or if you have one of the, one of these, so make sure you so get in there, all the way in there, and just make sure it's stuck down nicely. Now, with these pieces right here, make sure you have a nice straight fold. Get your knife, be very, very careful, because you're going to be cutting towards yourself, so you don't cut yourself. And then find that corner and sort of nice smooth motion. And go all the way to the board. That should be fine there. As you guys can see, you can just get your scissors and snip that part away. And that afterwards leaves us with a nice clean edge that we can just fold over and have, you know, very clean, beautiful edges. If you want to do a step uh, ahead, you could say, you could then just take your scissors and just make a little sort of cut right there. So you would have like a triangle ending and then that way you wouldn't make it even as you guys can see i did there a little bit by accident but you would sort of get you know even cleaner edging but this is perfectly fine because we're going to be covering 
most of the parts up and you will not exactly be able to see that little piece there but it's just just so you guys can see what i exactly meant so let me go finish the rest of this off and then we'll get to the actual fun part of the build where we're going to be putting things on adding things around and doing everything else okay guys so i'm back i've uh, glued down my insides i've trimmed the edges so they're nice and neat just because you know it just makes it a bit easier for me i was just thinking about this while i was doing it i would say if you guys don't want to do it you guys can do it as well because it just got me thinking about what if the edges were very sort of rough and tumbled and sort of you know you could distress them as well a little bit more because you know what if this was a very old time piece that went through a lot so you guys can do that as well so we've done that part now we're completely done with the board we've done it we've got it all done as i say if you guys want to put some sort of clean you know wrap it in some paper that's you know has some sort of design on it you could do that just a reminder don't forget this is a writing board this is just to be you know something that you can write on in your journals just you know so you don't add anything on top of it just just a little just a little reminder but now let us get to the inside piece as you guys can see i have uh for this this board right here, I used a very sort of interesting sort of picture frame design in the back. I am going to be using it again. I did bring out another piece that I thought could be very interesting to use, which was this right here. I'm not sure where my mom got it from or if it's one of her designs, but it's this. It reminds me of a very old books because very old books used to have this sort of thing on the inside the first sort of cover that you opened this sort of would be on the inside of the book so i thought this would be very interesting as well if you wanted to use some sort of something like that but it's completely up to you you can use whatever kind of paper you you want you can use with some sort of design you can use sort of colored paper you guys can use just a clean piece of paper and then just stencil on top you know whatever design you would like like i've used some stenciling in the back i don't know if you guys can see them properly but completely up to you what you guys do with it from now now basically from the start you guys can do whatever you want with it i'm just sort of showing you what i used so i am going to use the same piece of paper again this is a bit smaller as you guys can design is a bit smaller so what i'm going to do i'm just going to cut you know just give give it a, a small trim just so it's not so wide on the outside and on, on the obviously outside edges as well and so it fits on the board so i'm just gonna give it a small cut around and then i'm gonna come back and we're gonna glue it down and we're gonna start distressing and sort of working on the background so let me put this aside and just move this to the side. Disappear. Let me get my guillotine. Okay, move this over. Now, if you guys have a design paper that fits already and you guys don't need to do any sort of cutting, just leave it as it is. Don't worry about it. I'm just doing it just because it is a bit bigger. And I want to make sure that the actual design stands out because I wanted to because it's such an interesting piece of paper. I thought you know I don't I don't want the sort of white edges overpower it. I still want to obviously it's still going to be on the background, so you won't be able to see it fully. But it's still you know it's still letting it you know have its glory <laughs> even if it's in the background we gotta let the paper have its own glory so we have that now yes now i know it seems a bit weird because now i have these wide open spaces but don't worry we will deal with them like as you guys can see this paper d did have it as well you guys can see the edges but it's not a problem once we hit it with a few distress inks and sort of work on the background you guys will see it's completely blends in now i have 
I am fortunate enough where I have these markers so I can sort of align it. But it's completely up to you how you guys, you know, obviously it's looking at. I'm just showing you guys because of the paper I've chosen, what I'm go sort of measuring out and how I'm gonna glue it down. So about right there, I'm just gonna go and glue that down. My glue. As I like to say, you know, don't be shy with the glue. Do not be shy with the glue. Because you can't over glue something. Well, you can, but it's very hard to do so. You want to make sure that it sticks and, you know, it holds and doesn't come off in any sort of way. Okay. We have that. Let me just make sure I'm not going over anywhere. There, perfect. Again, I like to go from inside out. You guys, obviously, you all have your own way of sticking things down and doing it your way. So do it whichever way you like to do it. Get rid of some of these bubbles. There we go. Oh, also, if you guys wanted to do like a very distressed look, you guys could, instead of like I did, sort of cut it off, you guys could rip the sides off. You could obviously carefully so you don't rip your design, but you could like rip the paper off and make it look really, really distressed, really old, sort of ripped up and damaged. But this is, this is the inside. So we have the inside done, which is awesome. You guys can see it looks amazing already. I was going to say awesome. Yeah, yeah, it looks awesome. <laughs> but now, let us get down to distressing and add in the old vintage look. So I got a couple of uh, few distressings. I have uh, Sandstorm, which is like a lighter color, which I'm going to be using through the majority of the paper and then i have this sea brown which is very heavy it's this uh harmony colors we, me and my mom have figured out that some of them are very heavy the very i think my mom said oily like they leave a very heavy smudges so just if you do have those they are all awesome like i've used them for this piece right here so they look amazing they really do you just have to be very careful how heavy you apply them so i'm gonna start with the sandstorm and i am gonna get started on distressing the whole inside i like to start with edges and as i said i like to sort of go over in my head what this thing has been through now, if I was to leave it, leave it clean, then, you know, it, you could. You definitely could. But it would just be so boring. I think we can all agree on that. With adding this distress, you guys can start... I like to build up story in my head. Like, what is this thing been through? Where it's been? Has it been dropped? Has it been lost for decades? Really anything. And that's why, obviously, it just, it just makes it a little bit more fun. Sort of working on the card afterwards and giving it that look and it's just a lot of fun so i'm just gonna go all over with this as you guys can see the sandstorm is very light you guys can see that it's is it is distressing but it's very light so i'm gonna go over over it with the sandstorm and then i'm gonna hit it with the sea brown just the sides and little bit bits here and there just to very age it up and very distressing so i'm gonna step away for a little bit and do this and then i'm gonna come back and we're gonna continue and we're gonna get to the very very fun part of the card which is the stenciling and then we're gonna start doing the gear clocks and the whole mechanism and the what the clock itself and the rest of these Okay, guys, so I've done as much distressing as I think 
I like, as you guys can see, it already looks so good. So I've done that, as you guys can see. <laughs> Distressing everywhere. I think I figured out how to apply the sandstorm because I am using this. This is, uh, I don't know what it's called. It's just like a squishy block of, it feels like styrofoam or some sort of foam. But my mom did brought me one of these and she said, just try using that. And it's, it's way, way smoother doing it with that. It sort of applies it with a very light sort of touch. You guys can see it's very, very light. So if you guys have one of these, use them for the sandstorm. I'm not sure about any other colors. I just, for the sandstorm, it just seems to work really, really good. As you guys can see, it just applies it really nicely and sort of lightly. There you go. So, now we have the distress part of the background. Stenciling. I scavenged my mom's <laughs> stencils and I found two that I think fit really good with this. Now I have Tim Holtz collection. I'm sure you all know who he is. That one's really nice. So I thought that one would be really good. And then this one. I'm not sure who this one's from. As you guys can see, I've used it many, many times. <laughs> but it's it's it looks really cool. And I think it's going to fit in really well. So let us start getting these stencils down. I am going to be using the Sandstorm. And uh, hair on there. And uh, let us get going. So... Get this sandstorm on. And I think this clock, clock right here would sit really... Actually, hmm. I think this big clock would fit really well right here. So, let me start getting this down. Okay, so, I think this is enough. Let's have a look. Oh, that looks awesome. Oh, that looks awesome. I think I'm gonna just hit it with one of these, just a little bit, and just... So it doesn't look as clean. Oh, but that looks amazing. That came out really good. Oh, awesome. So I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna get rest of these on. I think this one right here. I wanna play around a bit with how they're positioned as well just because the gear cogs then on top i want to sort of everything so everything's visible everything you can see and everything sort of works together i also do have these corners and i thought it would be very funny if i just like i have this corner piece i could put this right here and then apply bit of ink <laughs> yeah that looks awesome so let me go and get rest of it stenciled up i'm probably gonna have this right here or somewhere else i'm always obviously going just as i see it as i lay it down i don't have a, a certain plan but let me go stencil it down and then once i have everything stenciled down i'm gonna come back show you guys what i did and then we're going to get to the next stage of the gear cogs and the actual clock on top. Okay, guys. So I've gone over the whole board with stencils. The two stencils that I picked up. This one and this one. I've gone over them. I've gone over it many different ways. And I love it. I love it, love it, love it. It looks amazing. This is what I was trying to sort of do with this first one. But I just didn't do enough in the back, in the background. I have done that now and it looks amazing. There's just so many things going on. Clocks and taking time and sort of the arms of the clock sort of falling off and just random numbers here and there. And it's just sort of, it's it, it just the whole point of it for me was just giving enough in the background so you guys always have to look for something there's always something to look for but now we've done that let's just go back and again talk about everything we've done let's say we've had the board 
cut it in half obviously left our way ourselves a bit of a gap just so it's nice and easy to fold as you guys can see try not to dirty yours up like i did with mine <laughs> but obviously we've done this then we wrapped it in the thicker piece of paper just so obviously everything comes together then we've stuck down our inside designer paper you guys can use whatever paper you want you guys can use an actual clocks and sort of uh, you know gear cogs if you have a paper like that you guys can use that as well you guys can use completely something else you know you guys can use nature anything it's really up to you however you decide and then obviously stenciling i was just thinking if you guys do not have stencils for some reason you just you know you just don't have stencils or you don't feel like using them i was trying to think what else you could do for this and i i thought what well, also would be fun if you just used dry brushing so obviously get some color that you like and do a that dry brush and just go over the whole thing with a dry brush that could look really interesting as well and if you have some sort of it, it could be just a cup if you just have a cup or some sort of you know just a regular glass obviously put it upside down go around it with a dry brush just so you get the outline and do that many sort of different ways all around and that sort of gives it that sort of you know circle sort of clock look and then you can just really lightly you know again dry brush and just do like a dab in if you have a very thin brush you could do like a dab in and then do the obviously the the arms of the clock and then it's obviously completely up to you guys don't even have to do the arms of the clocks if you have you can print it out absolutely absolutely fine just as i said many many different ways you guys can do it but we have done that now now comes the really intricate part of this which are the gear cogs and the clocks now if you are so lucky and have yeah so if you have uh the dice like my mom has all of these if you do not have those you guys could use just go on google or you know internet explorer whatever and just type in clock face clocks or gear cogs and print loads of them out and if you do that then you can go and cut all of them out and sort of make your own you know dice make your own stencils if you do not have those because i do not not me my mom <laughs> i have a uh, two of these these are a deep dice this one's from tim holtz i think this one's from yeah they're both from tim holtz so i am going to be using these and i'm going to be because I want to do something similar to this, but give it again a, a little bit more spin because I like what I did there. I'm going to be doing something similar to this, but we're going to alter it a little bit. We're going to keep this, this whole piece right here is going to be the same design. But for the background, I'm going to add little pieces. Also, I also have these thin paper dice i'm gonna be cutting a loads of them out as well and loads of these little ones which there's a full envelope of and i'm just gonna be cutting them out on a, a piece of a piece of card that again this is again an amazon old mailing card and i'm just gonna be doing a whole bunch on this one and then what I have left of this and just getting as many as I possibly can out. And once I have all those out, then we're going to get down to actually gluing them and arranging them. And we're going to have start having some fun putting the actual board together. So let me go cut those out. And once I have them cut, all cut out, I'll come back 
and we'll talk a little bit more and start deciding where we're gonna put things hi guys so i'm back now as you guys can see i have to step away for a little bit and get all of these cut out and prepared just so i'm not boring you guys with about three hours of me cutting out every single one of these little cogs and getting them all dyed all obviously tea dyed and and uh sort of using the dice and everything it's just let's just say it took very long time <laughs> but it's gonna be worth it and i just wanted to go over what i'm going to be doing first and then we're gonna be moving on from then so the first thing i did with this one that i'm gonna replicate with this one that we're making now is that i'm gonna glue down the clocks that don't actually move now some of these don't move they are all stuck down and then obviously some of these do so the first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna glue down the ones that do not move and they are gonna be basically like the base and then the ones that will do be moving like uh, this one here that's gonna be our main piece that's gonna be in the middle so that one's gonna be about there that one's gonna be moving so that one i'm gonna save for later but for now i'm gonna get the ones that are not gonna be moving i'm gonna get them sort of in the places where i think they're gonna be fit most i'm probably not gonna use all of my uh my cutout ones the ones that are not gonna be moving just because i did cut out a lot and i wanna I do want to use most of them, but at the same time, I don't want to overpower everything. So I did you cut out a lot of these. These are just fantastic because they have the clock and the gears and everything already. So I'm I am going to probably replicate this style that I did. So I'm going to take I have two of these. I'm going to take one of these and probably do like the same sort of design style where that's gonna be sort of glued maybe somewhere over here that could look really good and basically I'm just gonna start layering them down and seeing sort of where I want to be with them I know I want to sort of join two of these together just because they have the two gears that almost join so I'm thinking maybe these two like this and then uh, and now I want to have another one over here. Hmm, so I could probably do maybe this. Something like this. Yes, and then basically all of these are going to be in between. So I'm just going to lay them out, sort of see where I want them. Just a uh, bit of a bit of a tip that my mom gave me if she has given it to you guys then you don't have to listen to me but she said once you have your layout once you have all your things laid out that you do want to glue down and uh, obviously you don't want to mess it up you don't want to move anything take a picture as it is and then obviously work off that picture see how you've laid things out and so you don't have to be looking around for things Let's see, so I could probably do this one down here. Then I do have another one and I could do that one up here. As I said, this one's gonna be very complicated just because I wanna use pretty much everything I've cut out. Yes. I do, I, I am also gonna be like putting some of them underneath each other so they are sort of like layering up on top of each other so you know don't be alarmed that some of them will be covering each other up it's just that's how i thought you know that would be probably like the best look i do have loads of these little ones and i want to use them so i'll probably do something like this let's have a look I probably can fit this one up here yeah this one down here oh, that's gonna be amazing that's gonna be so good this one there i have this tiny little one i want to make sure maybe inside here 
Does that make sense? No, that doesn't make sense. Hmm. I also have these. These, uh, I've used these on top of this. They're two different uh, dice. And I've basically combined them. So I'm going to be using one of these. Probably this one because that one's the most clear. Probably with this one. I can also put it maybe one here. Again, don't want to overpower it too much. But at the same time, I do want to use... That's going to be very complicated. <laughs> I'm just looking at it right now. I'm probably going to use this one right here. Just so it's not... Wow, okay. And I still have loads of these little ones. <laughs> and maybe, maybe just a little, just a little bit, did too many of them. <laughs> but that, that's no problem, you know. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. That's the main part. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. And this one here, maybe this one underneath, right there, and then this one here, I need to figure this little one out, hmm, hmm, I don't want to just put it somewhere where it's just not going to be, you won't be able to see it. I want to make sure every gear is either visible or you can sort of see it. Like this. I am going just off how they lay. So, you know, no matter how many, how many you guys do, you don't have to do as many as I have. I just did it because I wanted to see what it will look like if I do more than just few. So I might be taking away some of these. I'm thinking, no, that just doesn't make sense. Maybe like this. Maybe this one over here, like underneath. Like that. Oof. That would be, that, that looks very interesting. That looks, that basically when I started doing this one, I wanted to make it almost like a mad clock device. This is like a mad clock device. <laughs> okay, so I want, I'm gonna I'm gonna go now and I'm gonna glue. I think this is probably the main setup. I might remove one or two, but I'm thinking this is basically what it will look like. We then will. I will then, guys, show you how to do the actual ones that do move. Those I will actually show you, obviously, in a separate separate part. I just wanted to lay down the ones that do not work. And then once I have those glued down, we'll move on to the ones that actually do move. So let me go glue these down. And then we'll get on to the next step. Hi, guys. So I've uh, glued down the ones uh, that are not going to be moving on our board. As you guys can see, it looks amazing. It's... It's just so much things going on and now comes the next part which is the actual ones that do move like this these two because i have cut out loads more i'm sort of looking over like the ones that are going to be moving and are not and uh, this is as i said the final setup and i'm just going to show you guys how to do it so basically it looks like this so like you can see this one both move but there's nothing there. I'm just going to show you guys how to do it. And then I'm going to go glue, do, glue down the ones that I have on this board. And then once we have that, all we have left to do is just the main clock that's going to be right in the middle. And then we're done. So let me show you guys how to do these sort of ones. So once you've glued down the ones that are not moving and you've put aside the ones that you do want them to move. I've prepared this one already. All I did is I've poked a hole right from the middle. So if you have a needle or if you have one of these poking tools, just poke a hole right through the middle. Once you have that, if you do not have one of these, these 
little pins that go through and then they are like a ball on top and then on the back it's like two little two little legs that you sort of bend down like this if you do not have one of these you could do like a like a toothpick that you could just put a toothpick through glue like a piece of paper on top and then that might work but it, it, it's easier if you get one of these if you get a couple of these i'm pretty sure they're not that expensive and they're just great you can use them for so many things but basically what you're going to do is you're going to take doesn't have to be a big massive piece of paper or a card like this is a cut off from uh, the earlier piece of uh, cardboard that we used for actual the actual board you really need only a little piece so i'm going to show you guys exactly what i mean so that right there is plenty so you're gonna get one of these and you're gonna do the same thing so you're gonna take your poke poking tool or a needle and you're just gonna poke a hole right through the middle of it like this so just a tiny little just you know somewhere in the middle and you're gonna put that with the rest of your of the spinning clock that you want to make and then you're gonna take let's say one of these or if you have something else that will work you'll poke it through all three parts so i can there we go there like this as you guys can see it's all the way through and then you're gonna extend the legs so it holds together and then what you're going to do so both pieces can actually move you're going to put glue around the legs don't put it on the legs because you want the legs to be free you want just the piece to be stuck down so put it all the way around let me get get my glue so as i said just all the way around try not to get it on the legs like this You know, make sure you put plenty of glue there because you want it to hold. Then, obviously, you don't need to, you know, be aiming because both pieces need to be moving. So, place it down and just press down. And give it a couple of, you know, give it a couple of seconds to dry up. Then give it a little spin. Make sure that it is spinning. If it's not, you know, you still have plenty of time. So, um, you know trying to peel it off if you need a bigger piece of cardboard just so you can put nice layer just around the actual legs of that spin of uh, one of these so the legs don't actually glue down so there right there so technically see you guys can see they both move i'm not gonna do it too quick right now because i want it to glue down i want it to stick down but as you guys can see this is how you do that and then from i'm not going to lift it now because i have a couple of them but it's basically the same principle as this and then you guys don't have anything on the back and that's how you do one of these and you can do it with the little ones you can do it with all of them if you want if you want to have the patience and carefully put in each one through and with these little ones i'm not sure how exactly you'll be able to do it you might have to you know fiddle with it a little bit but with the bigger ones like this and this and these two you can do it with all of them and you can just do as many as you want if you don't want to be putting down all these you can do completely just uh, these bigger ones and you can do the whole board and completely up to you it's you know number of different ways of doing it so completely as i said completely up to you I'm going to go and glue, get the rest of them done. And then once I have them done, I'm going to, so as I said, completely up to you. So once I'm going to get these done, the rest of these uh, ones that I want to be move, uh, that I want them to be moving, the rest is pretty much done. All we have to do after that is just the main clock that we're going to have to. There's a bit of a thing with that one, so it opens up. But I'm going to show you guys how to do it. But that's going to be basically the centerpiece. And once, once that's done, 
we're all done so let me go glue the rest down and we'll get back to it okay guys so i've glued down the ones that are going to be moving as you can see i have four on this one i'll have three on this one i wanted to i really like this bottom piece where the two clocks will be turning and this one as well and this one as well there's just so many things you can like fiddle about with but now to the main piece the big clock in the middle with that one there's a little bit more of a process there's a few more steps just because with this one you need to make this arm that lets it sort of swing open so when you do close it it doesn't get you know bend in half or anything you need to be sort of off to the side so that's what you have to do with that but let's just take it step by step first you need to glue your clock to a background like a circular background the way i did that is i just took this clock as uh, obviously drew around it on a piece of cardboard i cut that out and that's basically the back piece so that's basically your basically your clock face and once you glue that down you need to take the two legs that come with the clock with the die i have this uh, these two come with it so you'll basically get them and you need to find middle somewhere try to get as middle as possible you can sort of pre-measure it but once you go somewhere in the middle i'll then show you guys how to put everything together so I'll, let me just go glue this down and uh make myself a hole in the middle and then i'll show you guys how to put things together okay guys so i've uh, glued down the clock face so this is our basically main clock face now i have the two arms as well the little arm and the big arm so i'm gonna just put these together i'm gonna get another one of these and i'm gonna get that through i'm also gonna get that through the entire piece there so as you guys can see this is going to be our main clock face now as far as getting all this glue down you guys are going to need to get yourself now i've prepared a piece and i don't know sure exactly where it is right now oh yeah there it is hold on just a second <laughs> so a thick piece of cardboard is probably the best just because you want the arm to be very steady now what you guys are going to do you're going to cut yourself a strip off so say about that right there there so that's going to be your arm for the clock now you guys want to make sure it's long enough where it's going to end up about in the middle and you still have plenty to spare on this side right here I know it seems a bit off that it's sticking out right now, but do not worry, we'll cover that. What you need to do is where you have the middle of your clock face with the hole, you want to cut, you want to make another hole in there so it all comes together. So let me go punch a hole through there and then we'll put it, put it together. So we've made a hole there. So that is the entire clock face with the arm. I do have a bit of a long end. I do not need it that long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off about this much. There. And the next step is pretty simple. What you guys are going to do. Oh, also, if I forget. Before you glue anything down, make sure you have at least one more piece of... It can be any sort of paper or another piece of... Try to not look for something that's too strong, like this piece of cardboard. Try to be a bit of a lighter paper. And then what you're going to do with that paper is you're going to glue it over the top of this. So you can't see none of this. Once you do that, you're basically going to take this piece and you're going to put just a bit of glue on the end. And you're going to find exactly, as you guys can see, I've prepared a spot right there. So you're going to glue that down and once you glue that down you're going to bend it right before the clock face so that's going to be basically your arm that then opens and closes the clock so let me go and 
glue everything down get the piece covered up and once i do that i'll come back and uh we are almost done okay guys so i've glued down the last piece which is the main clock just now as you guys can see this is how i did it right there the arms are turning which is the main main thing that we wanted so that's okay now as far as the bend i've not tested it yet just because the placing has been you know it it is a very tight clock face because this piece moves so sort of both pieces are moving and turning i don't want any of them to be interfering with each other i am seeing that i don't know i don't know if you guys can see but that piece right there they're sort of overlapping so what i might do is i might move it down just a smidge just so they're not sort of not interfering with each other because right now they are so let me just adjust that and then we are pretty much done i'm just gonna distress the back a little bit so it's not as uh, sort of plain and as you know just boring you could say <laughs> just i'm just gonna distress it just so it fits in with everything else and then we're done so let me just uh, move this down a little bit adjust it so they're not interfering with each other and then uh let me distress the back make sure everything fits and moving as it should be and then we're done okay guys so i've glued down the last pieces also as you guys can see as i did with this one i've basically put a clock over the piece that's hanging out i did it with he this one as well you can't see it as much just because of the amount of clockwork that is everywhere so that worked out really well but this is the finished clockwork sort of writing board it's so awesome it's so much fun i did do just because i've run out of clock faces <laughs> surprisingly I sort of thought, well, the back is going to be still sort of boring if I just don't put anything there. If I just sort of, you know, grungy it up, sort of put, uh, you know, put some work into it. But I then realized I do have some stencils. And on one of the stencils is like a, like a very clear clock face. So that's what I basically did. And to me, it could mean anything and maybe oh that's the time i'm looking for or you know that's you know maybe is that a hint at some time that i need to put in it just it just added a little bit of a story to the whole board but that's basically how i finished it off just off the back and that is the finished clockwork board as you guys can see we have many many wheels that turn every single one turns these two turns these two every single one and as i said before you guys can do many many different ways and many different styles and it can completely be different as i said before you guys can make like a thin one that can be like a you know like you see the clock towers you can make like a tiny one that it's like a very small intricate you could do like a ginormous book that has so many turnings and you know clocks and you know gears that that could be incredible you guys can really do whatever you want it's such versatile design and it's just been so much fun creating it so i do hope you guys enjoyed this i do hope i managed to explain and show as much as possible and that you guys understood it if you guys have any questions, please do ask in the comments. I am more than happy to reply and answer all of them. But I do hope again that you enjoy this. It's been so much fun. I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you all will have an amazing rest of your week. And I will hopefully see you in the next video. Bye bye for now.